how does education influence our salary? ANOVA, which is just the abbreviation for analysis of variances you see on the screen, answers this question with frequentists and Bayesian tests. It also provides two different effect sizes, compares education levels pairwisely, and even corrects p-values for multiple comparisons. All of that is done by this simple command. So, in the next few minutes, you learn how to produce this statistically rich plot, you'll understand when to conduct Welsh's ANOVA and when Fisher's ANOVA, and you'll know how to interpret every little detail on this plot. Let's get into it. ISLR package provides a wage dataset with salaries for five different educational groups. We'll sample 30 random people from every group and compare their average salaries. But wait, is average actually a good choice? That question is very important, because comparing averages only makes sense if the data is normally distributed, while if data is not normally distributed, an average would not represent our data well, and ANOVA would be a wrong test, producing wrong result. Kruskal-Wallis test would be better for not normally distributed data, but that's a topic for another video. For now, it's obvious that we need to check for normality. For that, we'll use the normality function from the Luca package, which conducts Shapiroville normality tests with every educational group. High p-values in all groups indicate that our data is normally distributed, so now we are sure that using ANOVA is a right choice. However, the normality alone is not enough to make a right decision, because there are two different ANOVAs. Fisher's ANOVA for similar variances across groups, and Welsh's ANOVA for different variances across groups. In fact, the variance is so important that it's even part of the name, where analysis of variances compares the variances between the groups to the variances within the groups. It's also important because even very different means with huge variance may not be significantly different, while even very similar means with small variance can be significantly different. And a classic feature ANOVA can only be applied when variances are similar, while groups with different variances should be analyzed with Welsh ANOVA. Levine's test for homogeneity of variance helps to decide which ANOVA to use. A small p-value of Levine's test tells us that our variances differ and that we need to use Welsh's ANOVA. Now, having checked both normality and homogeneity of variance assumptions, we are ready to compute Welsh ANOVA. And the best way to compute ANOVA is the GGBetweenStats function from GGStatsPlot package, which needs only five arguments. First, our data D, with x-axis having grouping variable education and y-axis having salaries. Then, since our data is normally distributed, we'll choose a parametric type of statistical approach. And, since our education groups have different variances, we set var equal argument to false. Such simple command results in this statistically rich and publication-ready plot. Now, let's interpret the results. Welsh's F statistics is the reason ANOVA is called analysis of variances because f is a ratio of the variance between groups to the variance within groups. If that ratio is close to 1, samples are similar. And the further f value is from 1, the more different are the samples. But f value by itself cannot say how far from 1 is far enough to conclude that this difference is significant. That's why f value and the degrees of freedom were previously used to get a p value. But nowadays every software delivers both f and p values by default. That is why nobody calculates f values anymore. But if you want to know how to calculate f value, check out the link in the description below. Our very small p value shows a very strong evidence against the null hypothesis that mean salaries are similar in favor of the alternative hypothesis that mean salaries differ. 
However, a significant p-value only tells you that a difference between groups definitely exists and did not happen just by chance. But a p-value cannot tell how large this difference is. Fortunately, ggbtwinstats provides partial omega squared with 95% confidence intervals as the measure of the effect size for ANOVA. Our effect size of 0.34 indicates that the effect of education on salaries is large. For example, a person who invested a lot of years into studying earns twice as much on average as the person who did not even finish a high school. So the effect size makes total sense to me. But that's not all. GG between stats also provides a Bayesian effect size namely the coefficient of determination R squared with 95% highest density intervals. R squared shows the explanatory power of our ANOVA model and R squared of 27% is substantial, which means we can totally trust these results. Moreover, the bias factor, which is conceptually similar to the p-value, indicates an extreme evidence for the alternative hypothesis that education does affect wages, which is in line with the p-value on the top of the plot. Now, both bias factor and p-value tell us that the difference between groups exists. However, they don't show between which groups exactly. That's why we need to compare every education category to every other education category pair wisely. And luckily for us, GG Between Stats automatically knows that we need Games Howell pairwise tests for a significant wealth Sanova, conducts these tests, displays p values, and even corrects these p values for multiple comparisons without any additional code. How cool is that? However, if we want to, we can easily customize the results by using either additional code within the function or code from ggplot2 package outside of it. For example, if you found outliers in your data, you can display them on the plot and use a robust ANOVA to minimize the effect of those outliers. Here again, the function automatically uses correct UN's trimmed mean pairwise tests for this robust ANOVA and corrects p-values for multiple comparisons with the Holm method, which you can easily change to a more famous Bonferroni correction, but I wouldn't recommend it, because Bonferroni correction is too conservative and can potentially miss an important discovery. And that's exactly what happens with our robust ANOVA. The Bonferroni correction finds only six instead of eight significant pairwise comparisons. Then, if you want to display not only significant, but all comparisons, if you want to hide either frequentists or Bayesian statistics, or both, or change the appearance of your plot, you can easily do that and much more. Just ask R about GD between stats by writing a question mark in front of the function and try some things out. I'm sure you'll enjoy it. But what you could enjoy even more is the repeated measures ANOVA, which you would use if you followed a destiny of the same 30 people throughout their life and see whether their wage increase every time they step up their education.